Hi, so we all watched, if all of you watched the thyroid video that was posted yesterday, actually day before yesterday, we've understood that to heal your thyroid, it's not just taking coconut oil, it's not just about taking selenium and zinc. It's about, number one, cleaning your liver, because it's in your liver that the T4 to T3 conversion for your thyroid happens. And if your T4 to T3 conversion isn't happening the right way, you cannot heal your thyroid gland. If your T4 to T3 is not converting, the ty tyroxine that you're taking really has very little effect, which is why people on thyroid medication still, still seem to suffer from hair loss, the inability to lose weight, dizziness, migraines, headaches, constipation, and all of that. So the whole idea is how do you clean your liver? Part of the thyroid healing program, there are three protocols. One was understanding how your thyroid works. Number two is what we're going to do today how to clean your liver so that you allow your liver to make those conversions. Number three would be managing your stress and your adrenal glands. And number four would be your gut health. But today, we're just going to talk about your liver. Your liver is one of the most important organs in the human body. It has over 500 or more different functions. Right from the toxins that we breathe in the air to the toxin, toxins in our food, you need to think of your liver as an organ that is constantly removing these toxins and keeping us healthy. Let me give you an example of alcohol. If we didn't have, an, if we didn't have a liver, alcohol would kill you immediately. But because you have a liver, your liver has the job of removing all the toxins from the food that you eat and the air that you breathe. So considering, oh yes, and the cosmetics, the chemicals from the cosmetics that you absorb as well. There are many, many ways that we get toxins in our body. Now, your liver, if it's constantly cleaning out toxins, it starts to get sluggish, it starts to get slow, and that interferes with the conversion of T4 to T3. You remember that when T4 to T3 gets converted, there is an enzyme called deodinase, and that enzyme has the function of converting fat into energy. Now, the whole idea of losing weight is having the right enzymes to convert fat into energy. If you don't have those enzymes, no amount of exercise, no amount of dieting, no amount of diet pills and fat diets will ever help you because your body doesn't have the basic enzyme it needs to convert fat into energy. And that happens when you have a proper T4 to T3 conversion. So let's talk about how you clean your liver. Now, a lot of people think about adding food to their diet to clean your liver. There are a few great foods that we're going to talk about today that can detoxify your liver. But number one, how do we prevent the liver from getting more toxic? How do we, how do we reduce the toxic overload on the liver? That itself is a process of detoxification. So number one, the air that we breathe. Today, most of us live in air-conditioned homes and we're breathing the same stale air. A lot of the air conditioners, especially in places where it's humid, it starts growing mold inside. And these molds basically cause so much of toxicity and you continue to breathe the same air. So number one, open your windows regularly and let fresh air come into your house. Get your air conditioner vents cleaned regularly so that there's no mold. And this is also a shout out to all the people who have sinus and asthma. A lot of it gets healed, a lot of it gets cured when you constantly remove molds from your AC or from your home. It's created by dampness and humidity and when you switch your AC off and open a window there's condensation and that produces the ground for mold to basically breed. Number two, xenoestrogens. We've spoken about this. I'm talking about BPA plastic bottles. You know, estrogen, we spoke about how dangerous extra estrogen is when it comes to thyroid function. Now, where do you get this extra estrogen from? The water that we drink in plastic bottles. So you want to switch to copper, you want to switch to stainless steel, you want to switch to glass bottles. That all helps you having limited uh, exposure to plastic. Xenoestrogens, even the receipts, you know the credit card statements that you get at a restaurant when it's printed. You want to not touch that directly until the ink is completely dried because that's rich in xenoestrogens. That has molecular mimicry. It mimics estrogen in your body. So what happens is your immunity starts to attack your own thyroid gland and other organs in the body when you have xenoestrogens in. There's something else called triclosan. Now triclosan is another form of poison that is found in antimicrobial hand washes, 
in most cosmetics, in most of your hairsprays, in lip glosses. Yes, I know the ladies are going to hate me for saying this. The next question is, what do we use? There are options in the market. I'm just stating where you find all these chemicals that get into your system, mimic estrogen, and cause thyroid, you know, thyroid issues. Because it's real. I mean, we just buy cosmetics based on brands, and the more expensive it is, the more the, we think it's better. But actually, you know, if you Google, a lot of these cosmetics, including leading brands, are full, are full of parabens, are full of all these enoestrogens and chemicals that cause immense damage. It is said that an Indian woman absorbs anywhere between four to five kilos of chemicals from the cosmetics they use every single year. Now, I've heard that statistic. I don't know where it's come from, but that's a lot of chemicals going into your system. But when we look at statistics in India, we, so, we see so many estrogen-based medical ailments, right, from PCOD to breast cancers to ovarian issues to cysts and fibroids, everything, so many things related to excess estrogen in the body. Number one, weight gain, the inability to lose weight and thyroid dysfunction. So the third thing that we want to talk about is heavy metals. Heavy metals are found in pesticides and the food that we eat, the fruits that we eat. So it's constant. It's important that we constantly help our body detoxify. Cleaning products, most of the detergents that we use in our toilets to wash, you know, the toilet bowls, to wash the sinks, to wash, wash the floors, the air fresheners that you have in your car, in your toilet are full of chemicals, xenoestrogens. And this estrogen gets into your system when you inhale and breathe in that oxygen. So for most people who have car fresheners, please do not use these conventional air fresheners. You're better off buying an essential oil like peppermint or eucalyptus or lemongrass and just putting a few drops on your car mat and your car is going to smell just fine. There are a lot of options in the market today where you get all of these chemical-free detergents and flow washers and all of that stuff. They're not expensive. Look at them on Amazon. Amazon and they're very, very decently priced and you should, be, you should be switching to that so that you don't expose yourself to more estrogen. The next point I have, let's move into utensils. A lot of us get a lot of chemicals into our bodies through the utensils that we use to cook and the market's just getting smarter and smarter. It was first Teflon and then nonstick. All of these are extremely, extremely poisonous. And then you have aluminium. If you ask me today, the best, the best two sources of utensils to use for cooking is either cast iron, and if you don't have access to cast iron, in India we have access to clay pots. Clay pots and mud pans, try it. The food tastes better. You use the same amount of oil, if not less, and you have no exposure to chemicals that get into your system. Remember, you are what you eat. If you eat a banana, a part of your body becomes part of the banana, I mean the banana basically, the magnesium, all of that stuff. So if you're eating food which has chemicals, that becomes part of your cellular structure, it eventually becomes part of your genetic predisposition as well. And your liver gets more and more toxic, more and more sluggish. And although the liver has a function of fat burn, its priority is removing toxins so that you don't poison and you don't die. So fat burn is always put on the back burner and that's why we struggle. Most, most of my clients and most of my viewers on Facebook have lost weight by only cleansing their liver. You clean your liver, you allow your body to you know, balance hormones and lose weight. Now let's go straight into the solution of cleaning your liver. It's really, really simple and post this. I'm actually going to post the plan in the show notes of how you need to do it. So number one, we eliminate and we add. What do we eliminate? For three days, you eliminate gluten. You eliminate milk, all forms of dairy. Yes, even yogurt, even your buttermilk, all of that stuff. You can supplement with a probiotic or you can figure out another source of probiotics, but we don't do dairy because most of the dairy today is pumped with, you know, the cows are pumped with antibiotics and estrogen and all of that stuff. And remember, what goes into the cows comes out in the milk. What comes in the milk and what, it enters your body. So today, I tell people don't be on antibiotics. Avoid it if you can. But if you're drinking milk, you're also consuming antibiotics in a very, very large quantity. And that's why so many people are suffering from gut issues today, leaky gut, IBS, autoimmune issues like Hashimoto's, thyroid, Crohn's, Graves, you name it, all autoimmune disorders, gut problems, acidity, bloating, flatulence, 
inability to lose weight all connected to your gut, all connected to all of these antibiotics and estrogen that gets into your system and damages your gut. So in this three-day program, when we're going to stay away from wheat. I'm actually a fan of wheat, but the way that it's being processed today has changed the composition of gluten. And that gluten is attacking our gut and making it more difficult for digestion. So especially people who have weak guts, Wheat is creating inflammation in the gut, and that's not a good thing for us. So we don't want our liver to work hard enough. We're trying to detoxify our liver, so we're going to eliminate wheat. We're going to eliminate uh, dairy. We're going to eliminate white sugar. Most of you have gone off white sugar for more than seven days, so this is going to be easy for you. We're going to eliminate alcohol, and yes, we're going to eliminate caffeine as well. So I'm talking about tea and coffee. Okay, but we're going to have a substitute for you. Try it. We all know it's mind over matter. Three days of no caffeine is not going to kill you. You know, we're going to have other substitutes put into this little plant to help you detoxify your liver. So that's what we eliminate. Now, what do we add? We add warm or hot lemon water. Simply squeezing lemon in hot water or lukewarm water is highly detoxifying for your liver. It also creates an alkaline effect in your liver, which helps your liver flush out more toxins. You can do a mint tea. You have fresh mint leaves, boil it in water. You have a mint tea that is highly detoxifying for your liver and you still can have that cup of, warm, of a warm beverage. The third thing, turmeric tea. I'm going to put this recipe down in the show notes. You have a little bit of turmeric, you have a little bit of ginger, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of lemon and a little bit of cinnamon. All these ingredients are anti-inflammatory in nature, something that your liver needs, something that your body needs, and highly detoxifying for your liver again. Then we have a vegetable juice. So let me, let me quickly go over your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Your breakfast, you start your day with oil pulling, you move on to a hot glass of lemon and water, and then you have this fresh vegetable juice. You can have a bowl of sprouts, you can have a bowl of fruits. That's it. We're not doing any cooked at breakfast time. You feel hungry, you can have more fruits or you can have another vegetable juice or a coconut water later. Your lunch is going to be millets and anything from the cruciferous family. The cruciferous vegetables are highly detoxifying for your liver. Now people who have thyroid function, yes, you can have it when it's steamed or cooked. It's bad for you when it's raw. So we're going to look at cabbage, we're going to look at cauliflower, we're going to look at radish, we're going to look at broccoli if you like that. We're going to make a vegetable. We're going to have that with millets with a portion of green mung dal. That's your lunch with a salad that you can choose with lettuce, cucumber, no tomato, no cucumber, uh, sorry, no bell peppers and no tomato, no nightshade vegetables. So I'm going to put that in the show notes as well. Your evening snack is going to have a vegetable juice, which is going to be carrot and beetroot and coconut oil. Beetroot is extremely important for liver detox because of the nitric oxide and the effect it has on dilation and detoxification of your liver and your kidney as well. Your evening snack is also going to have nuts and seeds and fruits, so there's no way you're going to be hungry on this plan. And dinner is going to be similar to your lunch. You could probably do a stir fry of these vegetables or steam along with a large vegetable juice or a vegetable soup, which I'll put in the show notes. Again, you end your day with a turmeric tea or a mint tea or a peppermint tea or any herbal infusion. Now, if you want to add supplements to this, because there are some fantastic supplements which work with your liver detoxification, if you want to add them, you have curcumin, which is highly anti-inflammatory and very, very cleansing for your liver. You have milk thistle. You have a great probiotic that you can take. Your prebiotic could be apple cider or it could be a simple tablespoon of psyllium husk, also known as isabul in, uh, in India. That's your liver cleanse plan. You're allowed to have lentils. So if you want to whip up a quick batch of hummus, which is basically your olive oil with chickpeas and pureed with a little bit of, you know, with a little bit of spice, that's a great liver detox food as well. And you can have it as a dip with cucumber sticks or with carrot sticks. I'll put a couple of options, but that is the structure for you to clean your liver. Now, while you're cleaning your liver, it's not just the food that's going in. I want each and every one of you to deep breathe some fresh air twice a day. In the morning, I want you to do your pranayama in a space where you have fresh air. Oxygen is so important for your liver to detoxify chemicals and toxins out of your body. So it's not just about diet. I want you to exercise on the day that you're doing your liver detox plan because remember, exercise is circulation. Circulation lets your blood 
circulate? What does your blood carry? Oxygen and nutrients from the food that you've eaten to all of your billion cells. And it helps you to detoxify as well because blood carries out the toxins from your liver as well. So you're going to exercise, you're going to eat right, you're going to meditate and do your pranayama, and you're going to get a good night's rest of seven to eight hours of sleep because it's while you sleep that the actual detoxification will happen. So remember, it's not just about your thyroid protocol of coconut oil and selenium and magnesium and vitamin B. It's not about just that. It's about first cleaning your liver, supporting your thyroid with the protocol. The next video is going to be about your adrenal gland health, which is stress, followed by your gut health. Have a good night, everyone. Let me just go through my list. Oh, yes, I cannot forget your parsley and coriander juice, cilantro, one of the most detoxifying vegetables for your liver because coriander or cilantro has chelation properties. What does chelation do? It binds with toxins and heavy metals in your liver. And believe me, every one of us have it if we're breathing in polluted air, living in polluted cities. And that, chel that chelation basically binds with toxins and flushes it out of your system. So it's a lot that I've spoken, uh, spoken about. In the next one hour, I will put up a sample plan on Facebook below this video for you to follow and that's exactly what you can basically do. I see someone's already done a recap of everything I've spoken about. Thank you for that. But I will put a structure in and uh, I guess that's about it. Have a good night everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep. Have a great night.